I am having a really hard time turning the steering wheel, and it's because I can't even get the key to turn. The problem is the key. Well, in Mercedes or Chrysler Crossfire being quiet about what should have been a recall. Anyway, I'll show how to fix this sticky key ignition problem, as it's been famously called, without removing the key tumbler cylinder. This detailed video is on removing the key assembly and fixing it. I have some other videos you can watch after this, including how to install this in detail or see some other helpful ways to install this key assembly if you can't get it back in. Anyway, those videos will be in the description below. These are all the tools you're going to need. I'll put all these in the description below for easy reference. If this video helps, please hit the like button and subscribe. With that being said, let's get started. Move your seat all the way to the back. This has telescopic steering, so make sure you pull it all the way out. And then push the lock. Now this part's important. Make sure right now the steering wheel is locked, okay? You do not want it to be locked, and I'll show you why. When you take your key and put it in here, Look at that. I am trying to turn it, and I can't turn it right now. So I'm going to grab the steering wheel and kind of turn it a little bit. See that? So do that, and there we go. Now it's free. Very important, make sure you do this beforehand because you need this to move, so do not lock the steering wheel. Otherwise, you're going to have to do this again. Take it out. Remove the fuse panel door to the left of the steering wheel with a flathead screwdriver. Pry this back a bit and place the panel cover to the side. There are a bunch of screws that need to be removed. So I'll show you how to remove them, even the difficult ones. There's a screw right here by the fuse panel. Use a small screwdriver or a power tool if space permits to remove the screw. Now let's go underneath the lower instrument cluster. I'll remove the screw by the OBD port or hood release. And while I'm underneath the car, I'll remove the other screws located in the back. There's also a screw here in this space. Next. This one you can't really see that well, so you're kind of going in blind. You'll, you'll probably have to use a regular Phillips screwdriver and not a regular power drill because you can't really feel the screw, the threads on the Phillips. Wow, this one's hard to get out. Uh, upside down on my back, trying to get this out with a regular screwdriver. Now quickly remove the one underneath the steering wheel. Now use a flat tip. Gently pry it. There we go. Quick tip when getting these screws out, make sure your screwdriver is no longer than five inches. In fact, you could use a stubby one to remove it. Make sure you pull that screw out. Now, looking underneath, you'll see two nuts. One right there with circles, the hole, and the other one right there. Remove each one with an eight millimeter socket and a quarter inch ratchet wrench. Okay, it is now ready to be pulled out. Now, you could turn this a little bit. You might have to do that just to release this. air vent is now removed. This is a good time to clean this while you're at it. Now I'm going to pull down the lower instrument panel. I was wiggling it and I got this side out. Now I'll go on the other side and pull it down. There we go. Okay. Great. 
¿Sí? Cool. Now that this is dropped down, it's still connected, as you can see. Now I have access to the key fob area. Okay, now to finally work on the root of the problem. First, I'll just show you what we're working on. Working on this transponder ring, removing this electrical connector, this parking interlock piece. So let's remove all that. So let's first start off by removing the transponder ring. Gently pull it and twist. There we go. Let that just hang. Go ahead and squeeze the electrical connector. This controls the dinging sound when the door is open. Squeeze the sides here. There we go. And then lightly pull it down. Next is the parking interlock, the splat piece. Try to get a better angle to see what you're going to be doing. So you'll squeeze these, this little plastic piece right here. Squeeze and push it forward. There we go. Just place that to the side a little bit. Now remove this screw right here. Removing that screw allows me to move this up a little bit, this piece, just for a little bit of extra space. You'll see soon. So this transponder ring might get in the way, so here's a nice helpful tip. Just feed that wire through and leave it right up on top of the steering wheel column. Next, I'll show you what we're going after here. So, if you can see, this here is a clamp with a 10, 10 millimeter bolt that will be loosened very soon. But you'll see right there, that little pin, that the rod, or whatever you want to call it, that is going to be pushed down. Now, if you haven't already, you need to move your steering out as much as possible, the telescopic steering wheel, and then you'll see that piece but first. Now, grab your key, put it in. This is position zero. Now, I'm struggling to turn this right now. That's okay. You're going to, for me, with my, you can use my right hand on the steering wheel. I'm going to wiggle it a little bit, and I'm going to turn this. There we go. Now, that is still not all the way. So, turn to that. That is one, okay? This is zero. That is one. So vertical, like that, 90 degrees pretty much. So that is one. So once that's like that, we can proceed to the next step. Now I'm going after this bolt right here. And in order to get it out, it's quite hard to get a regular socket on here, as you can see, because of this black plate right there. See, very hard to get on. So you have to use a 10 millimeter wrench or ratchet wrench preferably to get this off. I'll put all the tools in the description below for easy reference. To loosen it, you're gonna bring the wrench into you, towards you. The goal here is to loosen it, not to remove it. You can see it's just a little bit loose, which is good enough. I'm going to push that pin with a pointed tip or a flat tip, and then wiggle this out. Okay, I'm pushing the pin with my flat tip, and now I'm just going to pull this, just wiggle it to the right a little bit. Okay, that is good. You see that, the pin? It's just pretty much just partially on this clamp, and that's good enough. Literally, like maybe you're moving, you're pushing the pin and then pulling that to the right a little bit, one or two millimeters, and it's just enough. To clear okay the next step is turning the key to zero and removing it you do not need to remove the key tumbler this is why we're doing it this way now that the key's out you're gonna push this further to the right this upper panel piece you're gonna move this up just a little bit see that and now this key tumbler will clear when you push it wiggle it Bring this in, 
towards you as much as you can and then just keep wiggling it and it will come out. There we go. Okay. Now, I can grab it. See? And I didn't even remove the tumbler. You'll see the wires right there. Now, I'm gonna pull this off. Got some gloves for better grip. Boy, that is hard to get off. Now, if you can't wiggle this off, you'll see this black clip right here. I'm going to put my flathead screwdriver on it and pry it upwards. And I'm gonna do this all the way around on this piece. Now you might be able to pull this out if like really strong, but if not as strong, you can do this. <laughs> After prying all the way around, there will actually be a little space right here on the top. So likewise, I will now pry the top all the way around. Of course, you'll want to use a really thin flathead screwdriver for this. Now, some people have taken this off while this piece was still in the clamp. So it's tough to say which way is the better way to do it. But to help others out, please mention in the comments if you think the end of the wire connector should be taken out while it's still clamped in place or after you take it out of its clamp. Okay. Got it. Whew. That was hard. Anyway, I'll give you a nice close-up now. You'll put this here, a really small thin flat tip. You're just gonna push up on this all the way around. And then you can even pry up on the, once you loosen, pull it up a little bit, you can pry up on the top a little bit. And you can even do it in some of these like grooves right here. So you're just pulling it in like this, just a smidge, and you're just prying it up. Okay? Whew. Here's how it looks with the tumbler still on here. Next, I'll put this in a vise. If this has helped so far, please tap the like button and subscribe. Then let's finally fix the lock mechanism. Okay, so grab your piece and I have a towel here. You could use another padded thing and it's on the vise right now. Grab your key, put it in. That is considered zero. Turn it. 90 degrees. When you do that, it's on position one, and you'll notice that this has gone in. See? I'm going to reposition this because I'm going after this piece right here. Okay? Okay? Make sure it feels pretty good and that it's not going to fall. Grab a center punch or nail punch, whatever you want to call it, and a hammer, and I'm going to Hit this piece right here, right there, towards the front of where it retracts the piece. Once it feels like it's in, you made a hole inside, you're going to just go ahead and pull it out. Here we go. This little piece just came out. You can see a spring right here. I'm just going to grab that little spring right there. Grab my pointy tip again. And just pull that right here. Pull that straight up. There we go. Got this little piece out. This was the problem. This was the problem. Wow. And this, and that little spring. Okay, so now I repositioned this back on the vise, and I want this piece to come back up because this is in position one. We're going to turn it back to zero and remove the key, and that will fling up. Now I'm going to reinstall this, and you could reverse these steps in this video 
or I would really strongly suggest you to watch the second part of the video of me reinstalling this key assembly. That way you'll see some other helpful tips and tricks along the way. But specifically, I'll show you some problems I ran into that may help you if you wind up struggling to get this in. So check that out in the description with all the tools you'll need to do this. And again, you do not need to pay for any new parts. Save your money and buy a drink. Okay, mention any thoughts or ideas you have for myself or other viewers in the comments. And if you haven't already, please hit the like button and subscribe for the latest cool content on fixing your vehicle yourself. Thanks for watching.